Coca-Cola first invested in Honest Tea nearly three years ago. Recently, it acquired the organic tea company. Now, with Coca-Cola's support, Honest Tea has now expanded its distribution from 15,000 outlets. That was back in 2008. It now has 75,000 outlets today. Well, here for CEO Sitan is the chief executive of the company, Seth Goldman. Seth, great to have you with us Good on be Bloomberg. Here, Before we get into the Coca-Cola deal and yeah. how it all happened, Tell me how it happened that you created Honest Tea, because I read in your bio that you used to do lemonade stands <laughs> and that you somehow got hooked up with a Yale University professor. Tell me the story sure, of Honest sure. Tea. It started with that I was thirsty. There just weren't drinks out there like Honest Tea. When I started, uh, my business school professor, Barry Nailbuff, was doing the Pepsi. When was this? What this year? is back in uh, 1995. Okay. There's a Coke versus Pepsi case study. And, and the question that comes out is there's so many beverages around. Is it conceivable there's any opportunity? And, you know, is there anything missing? And the fact is, at the time, there were hundreds of options, all with, you know, 80 to 100, 120 calories or zero calories. And we just said, you know what, there should be something out with 20, 30 calories. And then as we grew, we really learned that organics is important, not just to the ecosystem, but to the people consuming the product and producing the product too. So what did you do? You ended up brewing the tea <laughs> in your house? We brewed it in my kitchen. We put it in five thermoses, got an, uh, a repurposed Snapple bottle. We put a label on it and brought it into Whole Foods and said, we want to sell this in your store. And what did they do? Because I, well, I know the answer, but go ahead. What was the <laughs> well, reaction? The, 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 they said they'd ordered 15,000 bottles. My reaction was, oh my gosh, we, we, haven't made, we hadn't made any bottles except what we made in the kitchen, and, and we had to do some pretty fast uh, thinking. And so really, they, they came in with an order of 15,000 bottles right there in the meeting, and what did you do? Rush home in the kitchen and <laughs> tell said, everybody, go out, don't, yeah. don't throw away your Snapple bottles? I said, give me, give me two months, let me, and I'll, I'll deliver it to you, and we made it to the day. Really? Yeah. <laughs> now, what was special about the tea that you were cooking up we, in your in Most your kitchen? bottled tea is not brewed tea. It's just tea flavoring. It's like tang is orange juice, you know, so you add water and stir. We were using real tea leaves, brewing it in hot water and creating real tea. So there were the real health benefits, the real taste of tea. And then, obviously, moving to less sweetener. Uh, organic sweeteners and then uh, eventually to or, you know, organic tea as well. Now, how did you get the supply to make 15,000 <laughs> bottles of tea? I mean, that's a lot of tea it's bags. A lot of it's a lot of tea bags. We were buying in bulk. We bought from some brokers <clears throat> in Germany who had a supply. Now we can buy direct from these gardens across the world. All right, so you've got the supply of tea, and then what happens? You somehow end up getting noticed by Coca Cola, well, or how did you make that? Well, how, <laughs> yeah. that's so, 1995. How did you make the connection to Coca Cola? Sure. That starts in 2008. So we were doing well in the natural foods world, uh, but we weren't getting out beyond natural foods, and we weren't getting. We'd go to the regular beverage distributors, the Snapple distributors, and they'd say, "Well, look, this product's not sweet. It, it tastes a bit like grass. <laughs> we're not interested in this." And so we had to find other ways to get to consumers, and we worked with cheese distributors and corned beef distributors, even charcoal distributors. Anyone going to a store was fair you were, their, you were their new best friend. <laughs> exactly. So eventually we developed enough of a presence that the beverage distributors started to take us on. And that's when Coke realized there was a mainstream opportunity for organic, less, you know, less sugary. Now, did they too. come calling to you? They did. They reached out to us from a new unit um, designed to invest in and build larger brands for Coke. All right. So they make that first investment in 2008, right? right? And yeah. then the distribution increases and what? They see that this thing is a success and they go, Seth, you have to sell us the whole thing. Well, you know, a lot of changes have happened in the beverage world since we started and even since Coke invested. Consumers are looking for healthy products. And so they saw the momentum and they saw where the, where, where consumers are headed. And, and uh, I'm confident as they are in making the investment that there's a huge growth opportunity here. Now, I specifically have not asked you how much they paid for it because I know that you're not going to tell me, and, but you are going to stay with the company, yes, right? Yes, that's an unusual aspect of the deal. Um, and I, that was really my choice. I, I feel like we're just, I worked so hard to get to this point where we have distribution and, and we have such an exciting opportunity ahead. I really can't wait to see what happens as we grow with Coke. You have a favorite of all the teas that you produce? <laughs> you don't have favorites among kids. <laughs> Ah, well said. So diplomatic. <laughs> Bet you're a good negotiator, too. All right. Seth Goldman, thank you very much. The chief executive, a CEO, sit down. Honest tea.